quick way in this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your quad to Betaflight 4.1. So this is going to be a pretty simplified video, uh, just the basics of how to get 4.1 onto your quad. And this should work for most situations. Obviously, there's going to be some situations where things aren't going to work. And uh, fortunately, I can't cover all of those situations because there's just there's a lot of variables out there. A lot of people have different configurations, different type of quads. So um, in that case, leave me a question down below. Maybe I can help you out. Um, but in for most situations, uh, this procedure should work for you. So first off, there's a few things that are going to be like prerequisites requirements to get this to work. Uh, first off, you're going to have to have the latest Betaflight Configurator 10.6.0. And uh, you want to go to this website here. Uh, it's uh, github.com. I'll put a link in the description to this one. Go to this uh, page and make sure you get the latest configurator. You're going to scroll down. And uh, you, obviously, if you're on Windows, you want the Windows file here. Or if you're a Mac, you probably want the Mac file. Uh, the installation process is the same. You download it, double click the file, and run the installer. It'll install like the older versions of Betaflight Configurator. That hasn't changed. And then when you run it, you should get your standard Betaflight Configurator. It looks like this. The interface has changed a little bit. I'm not going to cover all that. Um, you guys will probably figure it out. It's just basically cosmetic. I'm going to make a couple of uh, examples here. I'm going to upgrade the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. This is on 404. And then also going to upgrade the um, iFlight Mega B. This is on 357, I believe. And let's just go ahead and get right into it here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is just connect up your quads. So this is going to be the Tiny Hawk Freestyle. And then let's go connect to it and see what target we have here. Uh, the target is Maytech F411RX, except we're here in the upper left-hand corner. You want to remember that for later when we do the flashing. And uh, one thing you want to check is what kind of video transmitter you have here, because you need to, you need to know that for the VTX people. So this, in this case, it's the uh, TBS Smart Audio. And if you want to make notes of other things that are unique about your configuration, and you can, I would recommend just uh, going with defaults, although you can... Um, you know, copy over some stuff if you want. I don't recommend copying over any PIDs because the uh, the way 4041 works is totally different from the previous version. So a lot of those numbers aren't going to make sense or work properly, and you may end up having a lot of problems. So I would recommend not copying over any of the configuration, but just make notes of what might be unique about it. Like say for example, if, say for example your props are reversed, then you you know obviously you want to copy that over when you set it up. But set it up from I recommend setting it up from scratch. Uh, that's probably the easiest and going to lead to the least amount of problems. All right, so go to the CLI here. You want to make a backup of your or your configuration, um, but you don't want to copy this over to 4.1. So I want to stress that. Uh, do not copy these settings into 4.1. That's the mistake a lot of people are going to make, and they're going to have some problems. So do not do that. This is just in case you need the settings uh, for for example, if um, you upgrade and like you don't have any of the the, the resources, for example, for for four one for whatever reason, I'll show you that later. I'll explain that later. But if it's missing, then you may need to copy that into the CLI. But for most situations, you probably don't need to do that. Um, also, you want to you know uh, save the dump in case you want to go back, and then you can you have the complete dump of that you can just put that back into in the for, for example in this case it's 404 so type in dump all and then we'll go ahead and save this to your computer and I usually have a folder for CLI dumps go ahead and disconnect and then we'll go ahead update firmware here and then here under the targets you want to find the one that matches so uh, there's actually two of them here that are Matek F411RX. One is uh, MTKS, which is the unified target, and then one is Legacy. So if you use Legacy, that is basically has all the resources already in there, and it's like um, flashing. It's, it's, it's the same procedure as flashing the older versions of Betaflight. They have that in there in case you have any problems. Uh, I'll do the unified target first in this example, and I'll use the Legacy for the uh, Mega B. 
uh, the second example. So let's select the uh, Matek F411 RX MTKS, and then you'll see version 410 here. That's the latest version. Obviously, you may see this video later and 411 or a newer version might be out. Who knows by the time, it might be a month from now and uh, 5.0 might be already out. Things are just uh, moving along so fast. Anyway, so hit load firmware up online and hit flash. Okay, so it looks like uh, the board did not uh, go into DFU mode. So not a big deal. So just disconnect here and then um, in this case, uh, the bootloader button for the Tiny Hawk Freestyle is like right next to the USB port. It's like right there. So just hold that bootloader button down while plugging in the USB port. And that will force the board into DFU mode. So you have to be in DFU mode for this to work. And then you hit flash and now it will go ahead and flash the firmware. Okay, so it looks like it uh, kind of flashed successfully, and we'll go ahead and now connect to the board. And then if you use the unified targets, um, you're going to get this notice. Says there are custom defaults for this board available. Normally a board will not work properly unless custom defaults are applied. So you want to definitely hit this button, otherwise things like your UARTs and your gyro will be missing and the board just won't work. So make sure you hit that. It's going to apply those defaults and then reboot the board. Wait for that to finish and then go ahead and connect. And you should be able to see that the quad ought to be working. But in this case, it looks like the um, gyro is rotated slightly. So you may need to make that make a correction. So it looks like it's, it's off by 90 degrees. That's not a big deal. Um, the Matek F411 target does seem to have that, but I'm not going to deal with that particular problem in this uh, video. Anyway, so the next thing you want to uh, set up here is ports, and I think the uh, video transmitter was on UART2. So I'll just put that there again, and then reboot. And we'll go connect, and then go down to the video transmitter section here. Now we should have, uh, you can see that uh, basically it's like a blank slate. There's nothing here, so you have to get the VTX tables file, and so you go back to your browser, and it's I'll put the link to the VTX tables page here. This is the link. So you're going to go here, and then uh, for most people, the IRC Tramp here, either US or EU, or the Smart Audio uh, TBS 2.0 USA or EU are going to fit for most people. Um, if you have something older or newer, then maybe 1.0 or 2.1 Smart Audio would be the one. So I've been using mostly Smart Audio 2.0 um, in the US and also IRC Tramp US. What you want to do is you want to right click the file or right click the link and then hit save as or save link as and then it's going to uh, bring up this um, window here and you can just save it to somewhere on your computer. Once you've done that, go back to your Betaflight Configurator and then you're going to hit this button here where it says load from file. And we'll go to VTX tables. In this case, I'm going to load the Smart Audio 2.0. And then that will put all of my settings back in here, including all the frequencies. So you can actually turn these on and off if you want. Um, if you want more information on VTX tables, again, there's going to be you go back to that page here and they they talk about how it works on that page so I'm not going to cover it in this video um, but here you can then go ahead and select like the band channel and power and I think uh, this particular VTX only does 25 milliwatts so uh, I think we can reduce that to one power level and then just hit save then your VTX should work correctly from this point on. Okay, so that's going to do it for this example. This will get your basic setup going, and then you just want to go back into your various tabs here, like ports, uh, configuration, and set up your quad like you would previously. So, you know, if you want to obviously set up like your ESC, um, et cetera, et cetera. All, this is all uh, stuff that's been covered in previous versions of Betaflight. 
not any different here. But I, again, when you go to PID tuning, I would just recommend starting off with the defaults. I haven't changed this on anything, even from basically went from a tiny whoop all the way up to a five inch, and these have worked, and I haven't touched it. So probably should be okay for most situations. It should work without it flying to the moon or just not flying or flying really badly. But like most of the time it's flown pretty good for me. All right, so that's gonna do it for uh, this example. Let's go ahead and disconnect this and I'm gonna connect up the Mega B now. All right, so let's connect here and see what we've got. Beta 357, the target is Omnibus F4SD. And we have a IRC Tramp 3D transmitter on UART 3. Okay, so that's enough information that I need. So I'll go ahead and I'll disconnect and hit update firmware. And we're going to select Omnibus F4SD. And in uh, this case, I am going to select the legacy version instead of the Unified Targets version. And we see we have 4.1 here. Let's go ahead and load firmware online. And hit flash firmware. Okay, so go ahead and connect here. So I didn't show you the um, saving of the CLI dump because I, I've actually done the CLI dump for this quad previously, so I have that saved somewhere before. I just want to show, I didn't want to Show that again just to save time in the video. So we need to set up the video transmitter now. So you go to ports, UR3, and select IRC Tramp, save and reboot. And connect again. And then under video transmitter here, you can see we just have the basically a, a shell, nothing, there's no settings in here. Load from file, and then this in this case, we're going to load the uh, VTX table IRC Tramp. And now you see that we have our table and all our power levels. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up again. Race band one, 25 milliwatts. And I know for a fact that this video transmitter only has three power levels. This goes 25 to 200 milliwatts. And that's it. So it's save. And at that point, um, at, at this point, it's just basically a basic setup like you would uh, any other. Uh, quad on uh, an older version and I'm going to fly this on default PIDs just like I've done on the other one so that's pretty much it to get you going um, if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below hopefully you found this helpful and I'll talk to you guys in the next one